Today we're working on a 2007 Toyota Avalon. I'm working on the rear sunshade. You can see it, it's stuck in the up position over there. You can see it, it's right there. The switch that's used for putting it does not, well, the switch works, but you can't control it in terms of bringing it up and down. It seems like it's jumped or something. I'm not really sure. So we're gonna go check it out today and see what's going on with it and try to get it solved. So the switch is down here, right there next to the gas tank opener switch and the trunk switch but anyway so the first thing i'm going to do is to show you guys what the feeler looks like okay see what problem we are having right now all right let's check it out i'm gonna go ahead and start it start the engine and i'm gonna operate this okay let's see how it behaves when i operate it all right let's check it out Can you hear the clicking noise? There is a clicking noise. I don't know if you can hear it. Listen off for it. Let me close the door. All right, listen to it. The clicking noise, um, meaning the controls are okay because it's clicking. You know, there's a motor back there, but I don't know if the motor is working or not. The problem is I'm working alone today, so there's really nobody to push the button for me while I try to see if I can manipulate the assembly over there in the back. So maybe I'm gonna have to rig something up that can help me operate it over there in the back and still mess with that assembly. So let's see if I can make a few adjustments here to this thing. Okay guys, so if I do the rig up, I needed to understand how this thing works in terms of the wiring diagram. And as you can see over here, we have the rear sunshade switch right here. So what I'm gonna do is I'm gonna take this, um, the cover off and get access to these wires. I'm gonna try to apply a ground to this red wire here to help me to operate that. So I need something that's long enough to get me all the way in the back so that I can apply a ground to this um, red wire. So let me, let me take this off. I'm working alone, there's nobody here with me. So I'll take this off and then I'll run a wire to it then I'll use my power probe probably to apply a ground to that red wire and uh, see if we can operate this from the back. I just stripped my... Um... So that is my red wire. And that is my... What's the other one in the wire diagram? black and white. I'm going to disconnect that and apply a ground to this red wire. All right. All right, guys. So now what I have, I've got my red wire back probed here and I've got my uh, breakout box here as well. If I need to measure some voltages or something, I like to have that always ready to go. But uh, more importantly, so this wire, Obviously it's back probe, but I have this wire running all the way. It's pretty long, so here it is. I'm gonna send this all the way to the back of the car so I can do my test from there. Basically give this a ground, that's what I'm saying. But uh, before that, I need to make sure I'm getting my voltages here because if I'm not getting my voltages here, based on the wiring diagram, then what I'm doing is pretty much pointless. Now if you remember, this is the wiring diagram. This is where we are right now. We are back probe currently right there so all i want to do is apply a ground because that's what this switch is going to do in the back okay apply a ground to it and um basically try and finagle the rear curtain and see if it moves but before that we need to check for voltages here to confirm that we are good up until this point which is confirm we are good up until you know all the way up until this point right here okay Key on first. Turn my key on. So, key on. Okay. So, you can see there is a battery voltage right here. Not quite battery voltage, but about 10 volts, 10.8. We should be good enough to operate um, the circuit. 
I don't really know why we're getting 10 volts instead of 12. I'll check that out for sure, but at least we're getting enough voltage here to operate this circuit. Okay, all right. All right, guys. So I have the engine running now. You can see my voltage, which is from the rig that I set up. So this is from the red wire. Remember, I run this wire all the way back to the red wire on the switch, which operates this um, rear curtain. So this voltage is certainly more than enough to run the motor back here. So let's see if we can activate this motor while I try to finagle it to see if I can break it loose. So let me mess with it a little bit and see. Uh, I'm trying to move this around while I activate it. Let me go to the other side and do the same. Still got car seats back here, but anyway, let me mess with this side. Okay, great, great, great. So here we go. So the voltage is getting all the way back here. That's not the problem. Sounds to me like this thing is just jammed mechanically. So let's try that again. Comes to the way back up. Let's go back down. It's jammed, it's jammed, it's jammed. Check it out, it's jammed right here. All right. Okay. Now, as long as I don't let it come all the way up, it works just fine. Okay, so I think we can safely say the assembly is jammed all the way in the back and voltage is getting there, so that's not a problem. Um, what I want to do now is put the switch back together, the one I back probed, and because um, it's fine, there's nothing wrong with it. So put that back together and then take the assembly off and uh, possibly um, see if I can fix the assembly or if I cannot fix it, um, Maybe I have to just put a new one in it, but I need to see what's going on with it. All right, guys. So a week later, I'm back to this job with the rear curtain. Um, you can tell how much I've aged in a week, can't you? But anyway, um, next thing I want to do, like I was saying, is to go ahead and take the rear assembly off, um, the whole assembly for the rear curtain off. So I was looking at the curtain material on the slider, which is sitting in the back. It doesn't look like there's anything wrong with the slider. There is no restriction in the slider. So I don't know, maybe it's the motor that's kind of binding maybe the motor is worn out um you know the motor has it's got to have some kind of um mechanism that translates the rotational motion to maybe translational motion or maybe linear motion or something like that maybe that mechanism is worn out but we'll find out so i finally got around to taking everything off and i'm ready to take the assembly off um the curtain assembly off i wanted to show you what it looks like from behind the vehicle because it's easier to see it this way so let me show you what it looks like so here is the assembly, right here. It's a pretty long assembly. Here is the motor. And here, are, well, here's one bolt I need to take off. Looks like uh, maybe a 10 millimeter. And then the other bolt right there, over there I need to take off. So. I'll take those two off. Maybe there's a bolt holding the motor down. I don't see anything, but yeah, let me, let me take it off and let's see what it looks like. guys so in order to understand um, how to bench test this assembly we need to understand how this wiring diagram works so um, unfortunately the wiring diagram doesn't actually have all the information we need so we need to kind of go back to um, the back of the car where the entire assembly was and figure out how the wiring is because um, if you look at this purple wire here it should be hot in on or start and then this wire here we need to understand is this closed when it's in reverse or is it open when it's in reverse well this probably has a pcb in it so if it's looking for this switch to be closed so it can make a decision not to send power down here then it means that this should be closed 
for the system to work properly when the gear is in reverse. But we need to understand how this works. And the way we can do that is uh, we can turn the key on and then we can kind of move through the gears and quickly take a test light or something to check the um, state of the test light at the back of the car. So let's go do that. So I have my test light. I'm gonna check it first. So I'm on a I'm power here, touch ground, test light lights on power here, test light lights on ground. So let's go check it on the back. So I'm in the car, I'm gonna turn the key on, right? Keys on now. And when I go to the back, there's a connector. I need to find me a good ground. And then this test light must light on the first pin of the connector, okay? And then we'll go to reverse and see what happens on the reverse um, selector here. Now guys, before I get in the car, this is the connector I'm talking about right here. So at uh, this connector, I need to be able to check, uh, let's see, this purple pin, right? This purple pin should light when I get in the car and I put my test light on that with a, to a good ground, it should light. And then the black one um, should light or not based on um, my reverse gear, uh, when I'm in reverse, okay? And that's gonna tell us how that circuit operates. There are a few options for ground here. I'll try that for a ground. I don't know if it's a good ground, but I know what I'm expecting over here. So let's find out. Test light lights, okay? So I don't expect to see anything at the black wire because we don't expect any voltage there until we are in reverse. Um, it's my theory for how this system works here. So what I want to do, I want to go put it in reverse. But before that, let's check our purple wire again to make sure that you see the purple wire is lighting up. Okay, so test light has a good ground. Let me go, let me connect this to the black one now. And I'm going to go find, I'm going to go put the gear selector in reverse. Uh, my connection might not be strong, but I'll put it in reverse and come back. So we are reversing now. So what this means is that in order for this circuit to not operate, the reverse switch to be in a closed position, okay? And once the reverse switch is in a closed position, it will not send power down to um, the rear curtain, okay? So this is reverse, it's lighted up. I'm gonna go turn it off back to park and it should go off. So we're trying to get the parameters for how to test um, the rear curtain assembly because we want to bench test it. And we need to understand what each of the pinouts on that relay should read before the bench test will work. Otherwise it won't work. I'm going to apply power, okay, uh, with my power probe through this purple wire. Remember when we went in the back, this purple wire here I suppose violet, as they're calling it, matched the violet on the other side of that connector. Okay, so there's a connector that goes in here. Okay, and what I have set up now is that, you know, I'm back probing this wire, which would have, you know, interfaced with that connector. So that connector has a has a 12 volt voltage that's coming to it. And that should come into this purple wire here. Okay, that's this one. That's a necessary condition for this motor to be controlled. The reverse um, a circuit needs to be in the open position for this to operate. So what that means is that over here on this red wire, we don't need to do anything because it's already open. It's an open circuit mode. Okay, we don't need to do anything with that. So that's fine. And then this third one here, this, um, I guess, switch wire. Um, this switch wire is what is going to actually go to our switch in the car. So. We have to kind of get creative here because this switch needs to be grounded in order for this circuit to be activated. We'll get to that here shortly. Now, on this E wire, which is ground, what it actually calls uh, their ground, when there's 12 volt here, it means there needs to be a 12 volt on this um, green wire as well. This green wire is actually going to be the gray, okay, based on what I showed you guys behind the vehicle uh, a while back. So this green is actually uh, the gray. 
meaning that if there's 12 volts here and this circuit is open, there's going to be automatically 12 volts over here. Now, what we're going to do then is to um, take a ground from the power probe ground as well, okay? Because we're not in the car, we don't have access to this um, C pillar. This actual gray wire is in the back and we don't have it with us, but this gray wire actually tends to green. It's actually green over here. Then on the other side, on the connector here, it's gray and then it tends to red eventually in the vehicle. So um, this gray and this red are basically our green here. So it means we need to jump this green wire to ground. It's what I'm doing. So I put a small wire in here, um, a female, to go onto the mill pin of the, of the green wire. And what I've done is I've taken the same ground from um, the power probe. So meaning that the relay and the um, the relay and the uh, green wire are both getting a ground from uh, the power probe's ground. So I think we are ready to test this. This um, we're ready to test this circuit, right? Let's go ahead and activate this and see if we can figure out what's going on with our assembly. All right, so down. Oh, okay. So I think what's going on here, what we need to do is to reverse the polarity of the wires. Okay. It's supposed to move now. Okay. Now, if we want to go the other way, that's pretty cool. We have to reverse polarity. Okay. Now this is where we're really gonna find out what's going on with this because the problem was going down. So let's make sure we're all the way up. Okay, we're all the way up. That's for sure. Okay, you can hear the motor clicking, we're all the way up. Now I wanna go all the way down. Okay, so, okay, this is gonna come to me, but so let's flip polarity again. <laughs> I think it's fair to say that there's nothing binding this because I've checked this and it moves fairly well. You know, I don't see any anything binding or holding this back. Um, I suspect there may be something going on in here because I don't see anything holding this back here. So, and, you know, I didn't find anything. It was pretty clear. So let's send this all the way back down. So the thing is, see, So it's trying to go down, but it's like there's something not, there's something in here, this mechanism not working right. So I need to help it down a little bit, you know? Seems like it to me. Um, now that I help it, it's just fine. So I'm gonna go ahead and take this, this assembly off, see what's going on inside, and then we'll find out what's, what's really happening, you know, to this assembly here. So. Let me take it apart. All right, guys, so I have the assembly apart. So there's a spiral torsion spring, which sits pretty much in here, like so, on this edge. And this piece here uh, should, this piece, should lock right on this lip when this is in place like so okay like that okay so that's locked up in there all right and there is this pin that sits in here. It's a small hole there that the pin sits in as a pivot. And this gear on the back of this plastic piece, okay, this plastic piece here, 
sits on this pin and it interacts with this gear that sits on the spiral torsion spring. So like so. Okay. So, and this teeth here interact with the shaft from the motor. I don't think that this is this is engaging really well. But I'm going to go ahead and grease everything and put everything back together. So you can see, um, using my power probe, you can see the motor works really well. There's nothing wrong with the motor. So I want to see if I can rebuild this assembly. Let me rebuild it. together let's test this assembly again and see what happens we've got a fix um, the rest of it, I don't know if I'm gonna video all that. I might video when I install it and do the final, you know, raise and lower. But I think that job is mostly done. I don't know about you guys, but I really enjoyed this one. I've got some other work coming up. Hopefully I can catch you guys on those, those as well. And um, see you guys in the next video. All right, guys, I lied. You know, I couldn't let it go. Moment of truth. Okay, down. Wow, pretty good. Back up. Okay, back down. All right, one more time. All right, it's a fix. See you guys next time.